Structure of Buckminster Fullerene Carbon is one of the most important and unique non-metal represented by the symbol C and its atomic number is 6. It is found in many forms and Buckminster Fullerene is an important allotrope of carbon in which carbon atoms are held together by covalent bonds and forms a cage-like structure in which 60 carbon atoms are arranged in the form of a spherical ball. It is also known as buckyballs or C60. The structure has 20 hexagons and 12 pentagons just like in a football. In this video we look at the allotropes of carbon. Allotropes are different forms of the same element in the same physical state. Carbon has three allotropes, graphite, diamond and fullerene C60. Different bonding within the structures gives the allotropes different properties. So here's the structure of graphite and on the right side there's a piece of graphite. So if we look at the structure we can see that graphite is made up of carbon. Each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms. The bond angle between the carbons is 120 degrees with a trigonal planar arrangement. Graphite has a layered structure. The layers are held together by weak van der Waals forces. Now these layers, because of the weak van der Waals forces, they can slide over each other, which makes graphite quite soft. Graphite also has delocalized electrons, that is electrons that are free to move around within the structure, which means it's a good conductor of electricity. So, graphite has a layered structure. Each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms. The bond angle between carbons is 120 degrees, trigonal planar. The layers are held together by weak van der Waals forces. The layers can slide over one another because of the weak van der Waals forces and it's a good conductor of electricity because it has delocalized electrons. And the final point is graphite is used in pencils. Next is diamond. Here we have a picture of a diamond. Let's look at the structure. Diamond has a giant covalent structure. It's made up of carbon. Each carbon is joined to four other carbons. The bond angle between the carbons is 109.5 degrees. Because of these strong covalent bonds between atoms, diamond has a very high melting point and a very high boiling point. It also means that diamond is very hard. Diamond does not conduct electricity because it, it has no delocalized electrons. So, diamond has a giant covalent structure, it has a high melting and boiling point, it is very hard, each carbon is bonded to four other carbon atoms, the bond angle is 109.5 degrees tetrahedral, it does not conduct electricity because it has no mobile electrons and it's used in jewellery and for cutting glass. Next is fullerene C60 and here's a rotating model of it here. As you can see each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms. The structure consists of 12 pentagons and 20 hexagons. It shows some electrical conductivity. It is used to make nanotubes and here's an example of a nanotube here. Let's have a summary. Here we have the allotrope, graphite, diamond and fullerene C60. We'll start with structure. Graphite has a layered structure, diamond has a giant covalent structure and fullerene has a structure which is 12 pentagons and 20 hexagons. The bonding, each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms and it also has van der Waals forces between layers. Diamond, each carbon atom is bonded to four other carbon atoms and in fullerene C60, each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms. Next is the bond angle, the carbon to carbon bond angle. 120 degrees trigonal planar for graphite, diamond 109.5 degrees tetrahedral and fullerene C60, 120 degrees trigonal planar. 
electrical conductivity, graphite is high, diamond is none, and fullerene is medium. Does it have delocalized or mobile electrons? Graphite, yes, diamond, no, and fullerene C60, yes. And finally, the hardness. Graphite is very soft because the layers can slide over each other. Diamond is very hard and fullerene is somewhere in the middle.